Welcome back. In this segment of Gravitas, we talk about corruption in India's sports bodies. At a time when India should be celebrating those sports persons who won laurels for the country this year, political heavyweights who tend to dominate sports bodies have been involved in the slugfest over appointment to the Indian Olympic Association. One of the appointment was that of Suresh Kalmari, himself a former IOA president, who spent 10 months in jail over allegations of financial wrongdoing in 2010 Commonwealth Games. The other man, Abhay Singh Chautala, was suspended by the International Olympic Committee for fielding tainted candidates during elections. His election as IOC chief was annulled by the IOC. Time and again, cases of misuse and abuse in sports bodies have come up. Ideally, sporting bodies should be run by former sports persons. This conventional wisdom doesn't apply to Indian sports associations which are not only controlled by politicians. They have been managed every bit by uh, politicians and bureaucrats. Over the next few minutes, we will explore the issue in greater detail. But first, let's take a look at this report filed by Vion's Karthike Sharma. Look at these faces. All of them are politicians and organically have nothing to do with the sport they control. But control, they do deriving social status and cultural privilege. It is this political class which has stalled every effort to bring forward the model sports bill. In 2011, we wrote a sports bill in that sports bill. We wrote a very clear that no public functionary or public servant can't be a member of any sports federation or member of any office bearer. There is no doubt that the government wants to pass the law. The bill sets out age and tenure limit for politicians and sports associations. It seeks to bring sporting bodies under the Right to Information Act and make elections transparent. But politicians have fought the bill tooth and nail. Ajay Makan during the UPA years had no success in moving the bill, nor for that matter Sarbanan Sonowal of the NDA. Current sports minister Vijay Goyal has his hands full battling the taint of IOC. हमने रिपोर्ट मांगी है रिपोर्ट आने के बाद मंत्रालय उचित कार्रवाई करेगा एक बात बड़ी स्पष्ट है कि हम स्पोर्ट्स के अंदर गुड गवर्नेंस चाहते हैं हम स्पोर्ट्स के अंदर ट्रांसपेरेंसी चाहते हैं द ओनली सक्सेस सो फार इज द सुप्रीम कोर्ट इंटरवीनिंग इन द केस ऑफ द बी सी सी आई फोर्सिंग इट टू बिकम मोर ट्रांसपेरेंट मोर अकाउंटेबल इन इट्स फंक्शनिंग एंड पुटिंग द पॉलिटिशियंस ऑन नोटिस द ओनली वे स्पोर्ट्स बॉडीज कैन गेट रिड ऑफ पॉलिटिकल प्लेयर्स इज बाई इम्प्लीमेंटिंग द मॉडल स्पोर्ट्स बिल It is the only way by which bodies can be regulated inside out. BJP has got time on its hand. Now it needs to demonstrate the will. Kartike Sharma for Vion. Joining on the show tonight is Aditya Shamlal. Uh, he's a sports lawyer. Murad Ali Khan, an Indian shooter, and an, an Arjuna Awardi, and Digvijay Singh Deo. Uh, he's a senior journalist, and he's been covering the sports beat for many, many years. Also on the show is Reet Abraham. He's the South Asian Games champion in long jump, Jaspal Rana, an Indian shooter and gold medalist at the Asian and Commonwealth Games as well, as Manavjeet Singh Sandhu, another prominent Indian trap shooter. Let's start by asking you, Digvijay, what are the politicians doing in these sports bodies? I just have never understood that. Well, they've always been there. In fact, if you look at the history of Indian sport earlier, when the Indian Olympic Association started, you had uh, royal patronage. And in fact, it goes back to even cricket, when the fight between the Patiala royal family and the Vizinagar royal family happened for control of Indian cricket, came down to the IOA. Uh, but I think the politics in the Indian Olympic Association took uh, center stage when Mr. Vidyacharan Shukla became IOA president in the 70s. And then it was taken over by Mr. Kalmadi. And, uh, Kalmadi's defense, in a sense, was that Indian sport wasn't moving forward. And even in, if you look at 96, 2000, 2004, there wasn't too much money in Indian sport. The government never used to put in money. So Kalmadi felt that by getting in politicians, he could actually get people in who could push the system. Mm. But that's created a monster now because most of the federation chiefs who are there don't have too much of knowledge of the sport. And uh, in a sense, they tend to be despotic and... Uh, 
they don't seem to leave their positions. You had uh, this model sports code which came in and the government then started imposing age and tenure guidelines. What it did was it said that, you know, if you want to take money from us, you have to adhere to the sports code. So while these national sports federations had no option but to fall in line, the Indian Olympic Association, which is an umbrella organization of these very sports bodies, said we are not going to follow this. You know, it's always a challenge. You make people in charge who don't know the business at all themselves, and they think they know the business, but it takes still much more to know the business. Uh, Aditya Shamlal is a, you know, a sports lawyer. Um, explain to us, how does this happen? How does this unfold? Why are there so many bureaucrats and uh, politicians involved and all these sportsmen who should be there in these bodies, who understand the business, aren't as much? Well. Well, one reason is that it's the absence of a sports law. One of the biggest reasons is that it's the absence of a sports law. So you have these federations. Every sport has a federation. The federation has affiliation with an international federation. And then it's recognized within the umbrella, as Digvijay mentioned, of the Indian Olympic Association. But there's no law governing how these associations are run. Of course, the law that governs them is whatever law they're incorporated under, like the Societies Registration Act. But it wasn't meant to govern bodies such as sports federations. We are applying general laws for a specific purpose. So what we need, and the need of the hour, is the sports bill to be passed and not in a watered-down manner, which not only, as Digvijay mentioned, the age tenure, and you cannot have repeated tenure positions in the same position. There has to be a cooling off period of a few years, even if you do meet, meet the age criteria. The other most Im important fact is the right to information. The, the, the previous incarnation of the sports bill uh, made each and every sports federation a public authority under the RTI Act, which would make, barring a few things such as selection, injuries, and confidential information of the players, which should not be out in the public domain. And those are stated uh, exceptions to RTI within the sports bill. Uh, everything else was subject to RTI. So they would have to explain costs, expenses, money spent. And this transparency would result in uh, betterment of Indian sport, even if you forget about who's heading the organization, whether it be a politician or a bureaucrat. If your decisions are subject to public scrutiny, you have to be a lot more careful. Right now, there's a certain amount of impunity with the way uh, a pub this public function, this so very important public function, is done in a private manner. So I, I would say that would be one of the biggest reasons. And that's then certainly a challenge. You don't know what the decision is, how it's been made, how they reached this decision. Has there been conflict of interest while they made those decisions? Reet, what do you have to say about the current uh, controversies uh, in the IOA? Well, they are supposed to be the um, highest sporting body in the country. And uh, if they don't set an example to the other federations, and they think that they can, uh, you know, um, place people like Kalmadi and Abai uh, Chautala as uh, their patrons and uh, take advice from them, which federation is going to bother about uh, doing anything good for the sports persons? They're not going to. So uh, in, the, in the first place, the heads of all the federations were present there more to 150, 160 of them. If they did not object, I'm sure it's, it's, uh, it's the uh, policy of you scratch my back and I will scratch yours. So they must have got something or they must have promised something for, to all the federations that saying that we will elect them anonymously and you know we will see what will happen. Scratch my back, certainly one of the things that takes a lot of organizations down. What has been your experience as a sportsperson, uh, Murad Ali? Uh, you've been representing India at the national and the international level. Uh, what do you think about the administration of sports? Well, the administration of sports, the less said, the better. Because uh, sports administration is not the way it should be run in the country. If that was uh, the way it is supposed to be run, then they wouldn't have been, we wouldn't have been in this situation as far as sports go. But uh, having said that, I think that we, are, we are discussing something which is very, very important just now because uh, the two appointees by the IOA, uh, one of them have already tendered his resignation or refused to accept it. The second person has said that he will not do it. And in the meantime, the sports ministry has also issued a warning saying that give us the details and in case this is correct, we will take appropriate action. So I hope uh, uh, the, the person that will leave the seat, because if he stays on the seat, then and the sports ministry will be compelled to take action. And this is an opportunity to clean up Indian sports, because until unless you remove the apex body completely or disassociate with the apex body, it's not no change is going to come.
And today the situation is such that all the funding of Indian sports is done by the ministry, by the government, by the Sports Authority of India. So uh, in case there is a complete de-recognition also of the Indian uh, Olympic Association, uh, it's not going to make a change as far as training goes. And there's plenty of time just now for the Asian Games Commonwealth as well as the Olympics. So Absolutely. This is an appropriate time to take action and just... Uh, Absolutely. Clean up uh, uh, the Indian sporting system. We got this opportunity in 2014. We lost it. And this is the second time it has come. So let's not uh, lose it this time. Absolutely. I think uh, the decisions and the changes that have to be made are drastic. It cannot be small, tiny changes to be able to achieve this. Digvijay, let me ask you, how does this happen internationally? You have countries running their sports bodies by professionals. But again, they're not devoid of corruption either. We saw the... Uh, the SEP, uh, you know, corruption scandal. Uh, it does happen internationally as well. Their corruption does seep in. But I have not seen the kind of rot we've seen in this sports system anywhere else in the world. I think you use the uh, Indian example, the right way of saying it is in India. India everything runs on Jugaad. While, while abroad you have politicians or you have kings or, or, or top royals, head of the Olympic committees or, or in the International Olympic Committee, they leave the running of the sport to professionals. I think that's the problem in Indian sport. There are a few federations. I can give an example of hockey. Uh, in 2008, we didn't qualify for the Olympics and KPS Gill's despotic rule came to an end. Uh, ironically, Mr. Kalmadi and his IOA sacked him. Mr. Batra came in and Mr. Batra got professionalism into hockey, changed the way Indian hockey uh, was structured and the results are now showing it takes time. But you've got to invest in players, you've got to back the players, but if you're only worried, as someone said, you scratch my back, I scratch your back, are you looking at the betterment of the athletes? We've gone to an Olympics this year and won just two medals. That's an embarrassment. For India to win two medals, it's an embarrassment. I was there in Rio. Did the IOA even have a white paper of what went wrong? Did the government have a white paper of what went wrong? No, the Shooting Federation, in fact, set up an inquiry panel to look and suggest ways of how to change the sport. Uh, I was part of that panel. Abhinav Bindra headed that panel who is India's only gold medalist. But has any action been taken on that? No, that's the problem. That there are ways to go ahead. Murad is, is a part of the shooting federation as well. But is there a will to implement it? Because uh, one of the reasons we don't see sportspersons coming in is because you have the politician and the people who, not too, uh, who don't know the sport too well, they fear that if these guys come in, what's going to happen to us? Absolutely. No, it's been a challenge. You know, there have been a tremendous amount of movies being made about it and how sports people have fought tooth and nail, uh, the way administrations function, you know, literally abuse within the organizations. Uh, Reid, is there lack of transparency as far as the functioning of these sports bodies is concerned? What do you think? Um, I would say yes, uh, because if a person is passionate about uh, what he or she is doing, then uh, you will see the results, uh, if not uh, sooner, uh, you know, uh, a little late than expected. But if your agenda is to just, uh, uh, you know, um, have the powerful uh, seat uh, and not bothered about the interest of the sports persons, then you will not see the uh, uh, results which is expected and there will no, not be medals, you know, uh, for the country. And if at all uh, an athlete or a sportsman in the country has to do well, it is not through the help of the federations. It is just their pure passion, interest, and the support of their uh, parents and well-wishers. And uh, to a certain extent, the a particular government, the state government, and the central government. Now, that's one of the challenges. What we've seen when we see international players go out uh, to compete, there are organizations that back them. The families sit back at home watching those players thrive. But here, the families themselves have to come to the forefront because they know that their children who are going out to compete will not be backed by these organizations. Mr. Shamlal, tell us, what's your take on it? So, that's basically where you have a situation where if you ask a sportsman, why have they done well, they'll say, or how have they done well, they'll say, we did well despite our federation, not because of. And we need to basically move to a situation where if we're going to win the medals that we as a nation deserve to win, it'll have to be because of the federations. We're not going to win 20 medals despite our federations. They're, they're, they're too powerful to win 20 medals despite them. So until the federations turn around and, and start realizing that, and it's all in a, the way I look at it is an incentive game. They are not incentivized. Nobody from the state federation level to the national federation level are incentivized to win. 
when you are incentivized to win, you will take the right actions. Otherwise, you will not have a job next next time around. And that incentive system, that ease with which ten years continue, you can be a president of an association for twenty years without a single medal to your name, and nobody's going to ask you any questions. That time has to stop. And when we incentivize winning, we'll start winning. I, I have no doubt about that. Uh, not even the slightest amount in my mind. All right, we'll continue to talk uh, a bit more about this in just a bit. But first, a report about how cricket and cricketers have enjoyed stellar status in India. But what of other sports? Why is that, that other sports in India languish in the shadows of cricket? Here's a report. Barring the ultra vocal support for and popularity of cricket, sports in India appear virtually non-existent. Achievements by cricketers attract rewards worth millions of rupees, but sports persons from other disciplines remain in the shadows. Athlete Sita Sahu now sells street food in Madhya Pradesh. Shanti Devi, who represented in Kabaddi, is a vegetable seller in Jharkhand. Meanwhile, athlete S. Santi is now a brick labourer in Chennai. While events like the Indian Super League, the Pro Kabaddi League and the Indian Badminton Leagues seem to throw light on other sports, the attention span they enjoy is very limited. The tussle for power supersedes priorities in all sports bodies, where politicians and not sports persons oversee the proceedings. At the end of it all, it is the sport and sports persons that continue to suffer. There is need to bring in not just sports persons into sports bodies, but also accountability and improvement in quality of training for the overall betterment of sports in India. With Krishnan Iyer in Delhi, Aisha Sindhu for We On. Let me ask you, Digvijay, what happens? Why aren't sports people allowed to shine? Well, I think everybody else wants to take the credit. It's only once in two years when you have the Asian Games, the Commonwealth, and then you have the Olympics, where the athletes get a chance to shine. I think earlier the Indian athlete was very reserved that he didn't want to take on the system. I think what's happened, and this has happened post Abhinav Bindra's uh, gold medal winning exploits at the Beijing Olympics, Indian sport has changed. Earlier we only bothered about cricket and the cricketers. And there was massive scrutiny on the cricketers. But slowly, it's changing. If you look at the kind of uh, celebrity status which uh, Saina Nehwal has, or Sanya Mirza has, or even Abhinav or Maricom, it's changing. And, and you need more and more superstars to emerge in Indian sport. They need to be marketed well. And once that happens, then the focus is on them and not the people running the sport. I think, Vijay, you raised another point as we were talking about, that these bodies need money so that they can pay their players to actually do well because people have to be incentivized. Murat, let me ask you, is it, isn't it essential for these bodies to have enough money so that players can be incentivized? They shouldn't be living hand to mouth uh, because they're sportsmen or <coughs> women. See, it, it, it is a very uh, difficult situation because you're, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? We really don't know. We need money to promote sports and to for the sports uh, heroes to be created. Money is required and nobody is going to put in money until the heroes are created. So it's a chicken and egg story and that's why none of the federations are getting any money apart from the fact that whenever there they are there certain professional leagues, then it is different. But other than that, none of the federations are getting any money. And the entire funding of sports today in our country is being done by the Ministry of Sports and the Sports Authority of India. Today, if the ministry withdraws the support and the sports authority stands back, I think the sports in this country is going to just finish. There won't be nothing. We have to learn from cricket rather than criticizing cricket. I think we should learn from the way cricket has been marketed. You talk to some of the old cricketers, some of the cricketers who have been playing, who, have been, who are my colleagues as such in sports, and when you talk to them, they tell you the stories when they had to carry the uh, washing powder itself from India when they used to go abroad to play cricket. But the way the sports have been marketed over a period of time in a planned way, it has gone to that level. So we should learn from marketing of sports and try to do marketing in other sports. Uh, some of the sports, of course, are non-spectator sports, so it will be very difficult to market it. But spectator sports, at least, we could put marketed better and get more funding because until unless it's marketed better, funding won't come. And as far as uh, the journalists are concerned, they have also to look into this aspect. The newspapers, the news channels have to look into this aspect 
that starts telling stories when a when a person of other sports tries to change his car put on that story rather than only the stories of cricketers trying to change their dress now Absolutely. that is something with the journalists have to look at Absolutely. i've been saying this but none uh, not this never comes out mm-hmm. because whenever it comes to blaming the own system nobody accepts it but Absolutely. the blame also is uh, is from the journalists Absolutely no the you know the coverage of sports is extremely important we just ran a story yesterday about one village really uh, you know having 400 people who are training for wrestling and certainly they are changing the landscape of the of of india when it comes to wrestling uh, so certainly uh, the involvement of everybody is required uh, but shamla let me ask you will the involvement of uh, the court in the bcci situation uh, is that the way forward or is it going to help cleaning out the system well somebody had to bell the cat so to speak and one of the things as a lawyer which dis- disturbs me greatly is the impunity with which the bcci is ig- ignoring and disobeying the supreme court's orders uh, they're using arguments like our state federations won't agree to this who are the state federations you've given them the authority the state federation just dis- com- disband the state federation and get a new one if your state federation doesn't agree to you know toe the line which the supreme court is saying so you know you have a situation where i think the bcci will set a sort of precedent one of the biggest reasons why rti and transparency hasn't increased in sport is because the bcci still wants to be opaque the reason the day the bcci allows more scrutiny into their accounts no other sport is going to be able to say no and i think some amount of transparency scrutiny of how money is spent in these federations will go a long long way in actually balancing it out and the fact that it's gone up to the supreme court and the committee was formed and the committee spent their time they talked to the stakeholders they came up with some resolutions now i don't agree with every recommendation of the loda committee but there has to be a concerted effort to comply which as far as i as a lawyer as i look at it this is not how you comply with the supreme court order Uh, the the chief of sahara has been in jail for not complying with the supreme court's order and the bcci can walk around with impunity not complying with it which is which boggles my mind as a lawyer honestly uh, absolutely i'll come back to you do sports person avoid taking administrative uh, positions in sports bodies um, uh, reeth could you shed a little light on that uh it's not that easy um they say if you are a good athlete not necessarily that you are a good administrator and i agree with that because most of the sportsmen uh, who are done with their career um they don't want to come back to the sport uh, to uh, help and encourage the youngsters and uh, their attitude is well i have been in the sport scene for a long time and i don't have the time or the energy to uh, give back to the sport and that's one of the reasons that uh, more and more people uh, like politicians have taken over the federations and associations and they stay put there Uh, Murad Ali, what's your take on uh, sports persons uh, shying away from administrative positions and bodies? Uh, sports persons are not shying away from the body, but in case you see the pattern in which the voting is done, it is very, very difficult for anybody to get into a federation. I mean, barring one or two federations, forget the shooting federation and uh, one, one or two other federations, but most of the federations, it is impossible. Until unless you are an insider, you cannot take any position because of the voting pattern the way way it has been designed it has been designed perfectly to ensure that the changes only take place from inside and not from outside that is why okay. you will find there a lot of times they have been revolted from sports persons to get into a federation and they have not been able to do it because it is impossible to cross that and 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 beat that system and the only way to do it is completely disband the indian sporting system and restart again this opportunity we got in 2014 or 2013 Absolutely. we lost it that time right. now is the second time we have got right. it and i Absolutely. hope the ministry of sports sticks With to you. the uh, sticks to the decisions they have they've taken and this is the time to right. disband it completely and start afresh we cannot I, exp- I agree I mean, with nobody you. is going to ignore 20% of the world population do you think international olympic committee no. Discard 20% of the Agreed. world population. Agreed. Uh, Dig Vijay, your closing thoughts, last 20 seconds. What needs to be done? How do these organizations move forward? I think it's going to be a mix. Uh, I disagree with Murad, and you can just chuck the federations away. But what I there are examples which have already been set in Indian sport, and I'll give an example of badminton, which we won two Olympic medals in London and in Rio. Uh, now the badminton federation is as opaque as as other federations. 
but they've given full control of technical matters as far as the sport goes to Pulela Gopichand. And he runs uh, the national camps, he decides what has to be done, and the results are showing. That's the way to go. There has to be involvement. Both have to get involved. Uh, the Federation president knows that as long as Gopi is doing his job, his job isn't threatened. Absolutely. I think that's the way to go. Absolutely. Thank you very much, uh, Digvijay. Thank you, Mr. Shamlal, uh, Mr. Murad Ali, and thank you, Reet, for joining us for this discussion. I think there is a consensus here that Indian sport needs to be cleaned out. If the performance of our sportsperson is to improve, uh, and it's time to wind this edition of Gravitas. Good night and good luck and thanks for watching. Great.